Taurus and Bridal. I'm going to show you today a tutorial on working with vases or vessels that are that has a wide opening. This one is a little bit lower. Um, I want to say it's about six and a half inches high or so, but um, it is wide as well. So it's about six inches wide as well. So um, typically, if you don't have it created right, so whatever that you put in, just to show you the photo stem. Well, eucalyptus can it hangs out so it's, it's fine but if you're gonna put let's say a rose or something in it might fall out and you're not gonna be able to just like this here so fall out so what we want to try to do is create a container I mean excuse me an arrangement without using floral foam or anything else in the vessel since it's clear so that um, you can create a nice round arrangement without it falling over or leaning out too much and having it more secure and bottom line is look good on your counter or your table okay so first and foremost i do have water and flower food in here i'm looking for my towel which is in my apron and what we're going to do is make sure we dry off the top really really good so I'm just using my microfiber towel. We do use these a lot since they do help absorb water from the counters or wherever spills we, we do have on the counters. Okay. So I'm just making sure it's really dry because we're going to use what we call bowl tape. It's just clear tape. Um, if you have, I wanna say magic tape or scotch tape, those are fine um, as well as as long as they're I want to say no more than half an inch wide uh, ideally um, I would like to use a quarter inch but we're out today so I'm using the half inch and I'll show you a trick on how to thin it out too so let's see turn this towards me so what we're gonna do is create a grid and this is kind of hard here because my table is a spinning table here and it keeps spinning so what I'm gonna do is cut full tape and I'm going to go not directly in the middle, but so I'm not going directly in the middle. I'm kind of envisioning my middle here and I'm going in between from there. So this is my middle line here. I'm going to go one, two, okay? So I'm kind of going in the middle of my imaginary middle line. So it's even, let's say if I did have the middle line here, it's evenly in the middle between my hand here and the end of the vessel here. So I got one, two, and I'm going to get another one. And you want it to come down the bowl here about at least a good half inch so that it can be secure. So again, I'm going to create, kind of imagine my middle line again, and I'm going to the middle of that. So after you have all your tape down, you should have a square in the middle. So I've got four pieces, one, two, and then one, two. So now I have a square in the middle here. Can't really tell because it's clear, but trust me, it's there. <laughs> And I can't really angle it in as much, but I don't know if you can see that or if it makes a difference. So um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to move this tape back here. Um, I'm going to, since again it's half inches, I'm going to pinch this together. I'm just going to pinch it together so that it's just sticking on itself to kind of create a little bit more space for myself. So I'm going to pinch inch you don't really have to but this gives you a little bit more room when you're actually putting all the flowers in so um, this little this container is a little bit wider so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another one actually in the middle because I think it would benefit from that okay so I'm just gonna put another one in the middle Pinch this so it kind of creates a grid. So, okay, so now I actually have here, I'm going to say three, 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 that's 12, 
12 holes, okay? Earlier I had nine, but I added one more since the center is a little wide. So now I have, and these squares or holes right here on the sides are triangles, but um, nevertheless, they're areas where we can enter, put in our stems, okay? And this grid will help your stems from falling apart and falling out of your vessel. Get, I'm just gonna, before I do anything else, bring it closer so you can kind of see. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit so that. So my water doesn't fall off. <laughs> okay, so again, first and foremost, as with a lot of the arrangements that we've done, we want to start with some greenery. And that greenery, again, we're still, regardless of the tape, we're still going to use that greenery to build a grid to hold our flowers in place better. So here today I have some lemon tips. Again, lemon tips are just smaller version of your sell -out. okay? And again, I want to have at least three different types of texture. I do have my seed eucalyptus, just here. Gives us some texture there. That's my seed there. And then I have a guinea uke. So it's still eucalyptus, same color as your seeded eucalyptus, but the leaves are different. Okay. So it's different texture, different look there. So we're gonna start with our lemon tips first. And this is where you have shorter stems that you can trim off. Okay, so just a reminder again, we're gonna cut everything in an angle before we insert it in. Because when we cut everything in an angle, it opens up more space for the greenery or flower or whatever that you're working with to drink. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick it in like that. Let me put this other one. So again, as of with any of the other arrangements that I've instructed, you know, gone through with you guys, you want to do right and left, and then I'm gonna turn, and then you're gonna do right and left. So we're kind of build a little bit, little of a circumference. And um, a lot of people ask me, like, how far out should you go? Again, it's your arrangement. You can pretty much design however way you want, but kind of the rule of thumb and what works best is to not have it lean out more than the height of your container. Otherwise, it will look a little just no proportion. So you don't want something that's coming out this way unless structurally that's what you want and that's the style you're going for. There are designs that are like that, such as like the high style or the Ikebana, but that requires less foliage, foliage meaning green ring and other flowers. So here, this, I mean, as for this sake, we're going to keep it um, just like a traditional arrangement. So we're not going to go off too off tangent with the design. So we're just doing a traditional all around and um, if you can't see, what I'm doing is I'm sticking it into the holes. These, this first layer of greenery, I'm sticking in the holes that are furthest on the outside. So it is hitting the collar of the actual container, okay? So now that I have right, left, and front, back, I'm going to go in between the sides now.
so now that I kind of have the greenery, they're pretty much filled in pretty well there. Um, I do have other greeneries that I do want to put in, um, such as my eucalyptus. So I'm going to stick, start with the seeded. It's a little more of a bunchier feel as opposed to my guni, which has much more of a slender stem, which I can insert in a lot easier later. So then I'm just kind of breaking it off into multiple stems and kind of picking spots where I can put it in and I want to make sure it sits in well and that it's the texture is dispersed evenly throughout. have my honey. So I'm going to cut all these little branches off because they're long. I don't need them to stick up too much. Again, I'm just going to evenly place it throughout so the textures can be seen. And again, we don't want anything underwater. No leaves underwater. The only thing you should be able to see in the bottom of the vase, especially if it's clear, that <laughs> you only see stems and no leaves. So I'm going to kind of strip these off. And they come off really easily. If you have a stubborn one that gives you a lot of sap, and some eucalyptus do have a lot of sap, um, especially actually see the eucalyptus. If it does, what you can do is use nail polish remover. That really works. Um, I would say that would be a lot more safer to use, and won't, it's not won't hurt your skin as much as uh, I want to say uh, goof off or paint thinners. So, okay. So here is my container, and all you should be able to see there are stems. I know this is a crystal vase, so you can't really see, but it should be very clean as far as the stem goes, okay? And I have an even disbursement of my greenery. There we go. So it should be pretty even there for you. So let's go over the recipe. I wanted to make this, since it's a nice crystal bowl, I want to make a very nice feminine, kind of semi-rustic arrangement. Nothing too confined or compact something that would be nice to sit on a coffee table or an island, okay? But, you know, but keeping with the soft feminine colors. So here I have some really nice deep silver kind of very nice lilac roses there. See, it has a little really nice tip of that, almost that rustic antique vintage pink there, okay? Um, next I have my pink roses, which are these are one of my favorite pink ones. I'm just gonna pull off some of these leaves that we don't need. Again, rose leaves aren't the most attractive, so they don't look good at all. And they dry up really quickly. You can just go ahead and pull them off. These are what we call pink mondial. And the outside has a little tint of green on the guard petals. Um, if they don't look too well or too good, excuse me, just go ahead and pull them off need them. Again, they're guard petals to protect the flowers. Leaving a little bit would be nice. So it kind of gives you that almost that two-tone color there. Okay, I'm just going to pull off some of the guard petals that has been damaged because their whole purpose, again, is to protect the rose and we don't want to have them looking 
speed up in the arrangement itself especially if you're making it for someone um, for our delivery orders we want to make sure they arrive nicely um, not just from the top but on the sides as well so they're not grooved so we remove the guard petals uh, let's see next we have these awesome honeycomb dahlias there look how pretty they are okay they're a really nice blush color there And then we have, and I wanted to add in a little bit of the carnations. They're white. A lot of people associate carnations with funerals, but um, they work really well in arrangement. And also because I like the contrast of texture, okay, in and throughout the arrangement. And these always last a lot longer than roses. So when we do build arrangements, especially we get um, to choose what type of flowers go in here, we want to choose a range of flowers that would from, you know, um, short term to lasting a lot longer. So that way your arrangement would last a lot longer and not have everything die at once. Uh, okay, and then also tulips are another long lasting flower there. So we got some white ones to work with. So again, we have a very nice soft white palette going on. Um, I wouldn't say white, but soft blush nice lilac so a nice feminine palette okay so what we're gonna do first is I'm going to start with my pink mondial roses they are a lot more larger head and I want to say the roses would be your focal flower your main flower in this arrangement so and uh, with the other flowers being an accent so here I'm going to um, I want to make sure I disperse the colors evenly and these open up really big and they are a lot heavier than let's say these ones right here the deep silver okay look at them here and here okay so what i want to make sure i do is i want to put them in focal point areas but since they are a bigger head rose i want to probably put that one in the middle as well because it has a lot sturdier stem. Um, this one has a thinner stem. So if I put it in the top, I don't want it to start going in that way <laughs> too quickly. So I'm going to cut again in an angle my stems. So that because gives it a, a wider mouth drink. So again, I'm going to insert it and I want to make sure it goes in between one of the tapes. And if you have a green right, if you stick it in, it should stay. If I have it hanging out, it should stay kind of where I want it to be. Again, I don't want it to come out too much. But, um, probably I want to say a um, little bit in, probably about an inch in from the greeneries. Okay. So I'm going to put one on the side since we want this arrangement to be viewed all around, one on the other side, and then I'm going to put one in the middle. I like that idea of having one in the middle there. So, yeah, I'm gonna look at my roses. This one's a very straight stem and this one has a curve. So the curved ones I like to put off leaning on the count on the collar of the base. So I'm going to cut this again about the same, hit the bottom of my table here. So I kind of eyeball what we let you. Okay. So this to be even so if I'm looking at this side I'm going to see the pink and I look on this side I'm going to see the pink and then as far as height goes I'm doing about one and a half times my container here so this is kind of exactly and again I don't want to force my stem in because now that I build a good grid I don't want to dislodge it okay so that would probably be the highest point so I kind of create this dome this Okay, you know, from here you can't, but you can see kind of the levels that it's at. So once I have that, I'm going to go next to my other roses here, my deep silver, and I'm actually going to look at my stems too and see which ones have a curve. So these two here have the curve as opposed to this one that's a little more straight. So I'm going to use these two. And I'm going to go, and you guessed it, right and left. So here, 
here now I kind of have almost like a crisscross as far as placing them they're pretty even so now I do have one more rose here I'm going to kind of I can't put it right in the middle because I already have that in the middle so I'm just kind of look and see where I think my biggest gap would be and where it would look nice at so I'm, after turning it around I kind of want it right here um, I know this is an all-around arrangement but regardless of an all-around arrangement uh, you do still have the main side like a front so here I'm going to stick it like right there and ideally I would want this to be my front because it's going to look you know, a little more fuller with the extra rows there but then we still have our other flowers to fill in so I'm not too worried about that uh, next I'm going to put, I'm going to use our pretty honeycomb dahlias and these are really nice soft, kind of almost like a, a, a blushy lilac, I'm not sure how to explain it, yeah, I'm just pulling off all these dead leaves, um, don't throw away these buds, although if I stick an arrangement in it's going to look awkwardly sticking out, but we can cut them off and use them. This gives you a different textural look. Um, of course, it looks totally different from this. That's why we want to keep it because it makes it look a lot more like a garden, a little more of a natural setting, okay? So we don't want to toss them. I'm just going to place it off to the side because we're going to add that in later as like filler. But for now, again, so I'm going to look. Where I placed my last rows is where I saw the biggest gap. Now you're gonna have the other gaps, like here, 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 okay? So you're going to stick your next vocal flower, which is your dahlia, in there. So I'm going to cut my stem again, and I'm going to place it on my counter here, and kind of eyeball where I would want it to land. Again, this is a dome, round shape, so I kind of want it to sit in between my first and top layer so I'm just gonna I think it'll be ideal here so I'm just gonna wiggle it in again you don't want to force it so if you had a good grid and again with your greenery grid your flower should stay pretty much where you want it to be and actually want it a little bit higher so I'm going to gently wiggle it out unlike foam because once you stick it in with foam it should hold where you want it to be um, so it's a little different than working with a vase, especially, you know, working with a wider container. Um, and unlike foam, you can't, you can actually pull it back out and reinsert it. So here, I got it in there. A little higher than I want, but I can fill that in with something else. But it's a little bit shorter, okay? If I look here, created that round shape there. I have my top layer, second layer, and third layer there. Okay. So you can't see so well from there. Again, I have my top, second, grid there it's staying and you want to make sure your stems stay so even if I'm spinning this <laughs> kind of semi fast it's not going to move just like if it's sitting in the car going for delivery it shouldn't move okay um, so next we have our carnation again texture okay, okay so I'm kind 
cutting it and I want to put it in probably more that second level there. And carnations do have these nodes and we want to carefully clean it off again. These are their actual, found in the way, their leaves and we don't want any leaves of foliage hitting the water. So, and they're not too attractive anyway. So we want to have a clean insertion um, with carnations, especially carnations, mini carnations, um, some of the stems of the flowers have these nodes and they break off really easy. They snap off really easily and we don't want to force it in. If there's leaves on them, it'll make it a little difficult to put in and you force it, it will snap off. And we don't want it to snap off because we want it to stay. So let's see. I have a good grid, so it just stayed where I placed it. So I'm just gonna spin this around, find another empty spot. And I'm just gonna pull it off carefully. So right away, if I pull, yank at it, it's going to break off. Next, I have my tulips, and tulips are, I call them temperamental, but they're, um, uh, what do you call it, um, phototrop phototropic. So what, me what it means is they like to go towards the sun, and in water, they're one of the few flowers that will continue to grow, meaning they're going to reach, they're going to reach for the sun, reach for the sunlight. So um, we want to tuck them in, we don't want them coming out too much since you know if it's like this let's say hanging out this much by time in an hour sometimes it can be like right here they'll grow another inch <laughs> really quickly so I'm going to tuck them in because um, like you know if you're working with lilies then you know they're you need them you need to make sure they have room to stem is kind of weak so I'm gonna have to stick it in somewhere else where it's a little bit stronger um, like lilies, if you were working with lilies, you'll need room for them to open, okay? Um, with tulips, you want to make sure you leave room for them to grow. So I kind of tuck this one in here, okay? So if you look on the side, it's not coming out too much, okay? I'm gonna make sure that later on, if it does decide to grow, that it will be still it would still look appropriate. the rest of my greenery uh, before I add in any of my fillers. In this case, we're going to be using these right here, which are the Queen Anne's Lace. But um, I do have some noticeable gaps that's not holding. This one doesn't look too good, so I'm not going to use that one. So I'm going to cut this. And again, we still have our Dahlia Buds. Don't worry. These, again, we're putting in for textural preference not because they will open because they will not open <laughs> so don't count on them opening and looking pretty like that um, so I'm going to kind of fill in the little gaps with the greenery here spin I'm just pulling up the leaves that will be in the way I can even move this tool up a little bit stick the greenery in there and have that branch there support support the tulip until it starts drinking and to give us once it starts drinking again the stem would be very strong so you don't need to worry about that okay. tulips can be actually out of water and be very limp for like five or six hours and then once you put them in water they will revive just like nothing some other delicate flowers, okay? And this will work really nice, like on a, uh, I wanna say, a 
even as a centerpiece for a wedding. So all the brides are going through this color scheme as far as like the blush, softer romantic palettes we call it. Okay, so it's pretty even. Okay, so we got that dome shape. It's pretty even all around. Um, I'm not gonna use any more of the greenery there. What I'm going to use now add them a little touch of color would be the Queen Anne's and also to fill in the gaps, okay? So here, really soft and fluffy. This one is called Chocolate Lace. It's called Chocolate Lace, but it's not brown. It's, if you can actually see the color, they're a little bit more of a, a plum, purple, purplish, and then some of them can be a, a little bit white. I love Queen Anne's Lace since it's just like exactly what it is, lace. It's a lot more delicate looking, okay? So even here. This is all from the same bunch, but they're all a little bit different as far as the shades go. So I'm going to, as with any filler, you're going to find the gaps. Like right here, I have this gap right here that I wanna fill in. And again, I'm just gonna hit the counter and kind of eyeball, that's kind of the level I would want it to go. So I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it in. Okay, see how that fills up that little space there? And let's see, I'm going to make this one a little bit taller. And these side buds, again, don't throw them away because they add a very nice textural look to it later, so. There. Okay. So it gives you, again, textural and color differences, variation there. And this one, I think I'm going to have it push this tulip up a little bit and have it down here since I already got them, the other ones down there. So, I mean, excuse me, up in the middle almost. So I do want it to have a variation as far as, you know, having it not just at one level, but up and down different levels as well. So I'm just spinning. I think I want to put something else here. That looks a little empty there. So let's see. I'm going to grab another one. This one is nice. So I'm just going to again, cut these little buds off. We're just going to, we're going to keep them. I'm going to cut this one a little bit shorter because I have already two high mid-range and then I just kind of want to have, create more of that depth in the arrangement. So, okay, so I kind of have it just, not just one level in between, build, help build volume that way. And then from here, I'm going to gather all my separate stems here cut them suitable for insertion. So I'm just going to cut them to certain levels. Okay. And then just kind of see where it goes well. Like let's say I want something that comes up from here. Again, you kind of have to eyeball where you want it to go. If you see a gap and you want that balanced feel um, Again, the fillers are supposed to help you continue that round shape, that dome, that dome look. Whether it's coming out or just going straight up, okay? You want to have that balanced look throughout. So, to actually stick this one more in the middle here. Again, as you put in more stems, your stems are going to have a little more difficult time going in since it's going to be a little more tighter as we go because we have we already have a lot of stems in there. And I think as far as balancing this out, this is pretty it's getting there. So we got that hanging out there. And then last but not least, we have our buds. Again, this job again is to 
even everything out for us. So I'm just gonna rip that little piece off there because we don't need it. We want some we want a nice clean insertion. So if you're looking at the arrangement, I'm gonna push it out a little bit here. I'm just kind of eyeball and then I'm gonna put it on I guess on the floor counter, the bottom of my counter here, kind of hit and kind of visualize how far in it would go because I'm hitting the bottom of my table. So I'm gonna go well there. And but I'm gonna turn it around. Okay. I mean even there is even though there is a focal front part, you still want your arrangement to be overall evenly dispersed and as balanced as far as texture goes, colors go, um, and have it pleasing to the eye, especially if it's a centerpiece in the middle of a table, you want your guests to all like it from all sides, no matter if they sit on the right or on the left, right? Okay, thank you so much again for joining and spending your time with me. Hope you enjoy this tutorial and happy creating. Thanks. Bye. See you next time.